Okay, here we go, here we go. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are across the globe. Welcome to On the Sofa with yours truly, Esther Often. Can you see On the Sofa with Esther? Yes, very simple and basic background. But today I'm going to introduce a lovely lady that I've interviewed several times in the past, Bernadette Bascom. And the, the reason for interviewing this lady is not just about her musical acumen as a singer and a songwriter as well, right? Yes. Yeah. But also, she is known as Mama Bascom, and she's an award-winning performer and founding creative director of the Music Project North Shore. Is that correct, my dear? That's very right. much correct. And also, we have some fantastic news to share with you because Mama Bascom, and I can see why they call her Mama, is really <laughs> creating a really fantastic movement that's teaching um, those who are voiceless at the moment to have a voice, but in a really interesting way. So let's go over to Bernadette. Welcome, Bernadette. Thank you for having me, Esther. It's Real always wonderful to be with you. Real pleasure. And before we go any further, I'm going to ask that rather boring question, but I need to because there's so much that's going to come out of this conversation and we've got 20 minutes to really lock down the work, the incredible work that you're doing. So who is Bernadette in a nutshell, in a peanut shell, and you look like a seashell. You're nothing small, you're a seashell. Thank you so, so that's beautiful. Um, well, basically I have created an app for children that are minimally and nonverbal. Three years ago, Microsoft Corporation and I created a partnership. I created a, a, a way to bring speech out of people that don't speak, how to help people that stutter, how to help people really that are speakers and that have problems keeping a flow and but more than anything, it's about these children. And I have had 100% success for the last decade. Mm -hmm. I have been teaching nonverbal children through music, through song lyrics, through song hooks. And what a song hook is, is the rep repetitive, be my, be my baby, my one. Whatever goes over and over, my girl. The things that lock into your uh, consciousness and won't let you go. That's why we call it a hook. And I have had a 100% success rate with these kids that weren't saying anything, but now are confident enough to sing, but to initiate conversation with their families. And I mm. teach parents, siblings, caregivers, and teachers how to teach my program, because I realized at some point that there wasn't enough of me. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And Bernadette, can we just go back a little bit in terms of, you know, that 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 first point of calling, because it is a calling to this, this type of work. What got you onto this path? Well, um, Stevie Wonder was my first disabled friend. And he taught me a lot about his abilities, his brilliance, uh, the things he was capable of doing. Because you were first signed to him. You were the first artist that was signed to Stevie Wonder, weren't you? So we, we've got to get that clear so people can get things in context. This is the lady, ladies and gents, the yes. first artist that Stevie Wonder signed. Yeah. <laughs> And it was so precious because uh, his, uh, his very good friend, John Harris, told me, I always wondered, he said, uh, he said, you know, Stevie picked you. I said, really? He says, yeah, you were his choice. So that has always made me even happier about knowing that, that mm -hmm. it was his choice. But... Um, but being with him as just a human being, one-on-one, -on -one, without the music, I realized how much control of his life 
he was capable of taking if you believed it. Shaving, pouring drinks for his friends, just little things that you wouldn't think, like riding a horse, parking mm -hmm. a car. I've seen him do all this. So that kind of softened my heart and opened my heart to the abilities of people that might look differently able to us, but they're not. Differently able. They just do things differently. Yeah. So I had a mother, I, when I came home from Vegas, I was a, had, uh, on the strip in Vegas for like 15 years. Mm. When I came home from Vegas, I said, who can I give all this to? I have all this um, experience, all this showmanship, all this performance ability, all this vocal ability. Who do I give it to? So first I started giving it to alternative high school students. I mm. taught them to perform and to sing. And finally, though, I had a woman grab my hand in a, in a nightclub and say, had you ever thought of teaching mm. young people with disabilities? And I said, no, but I'll help. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. It turned into a passion. It turned into a privilege. It turned into a love. And over the years, I've, I've taught hundreds of young people now. And I'm not saying they're orators. I'm not saying they, they can give speeches, but they can say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Say, my tummy hurts. They can say, uh, how you doing, B? That's what they say to me. How you doing, B? <laughs> oh and it's so God. precious to see them bloom. And so Microsoft decided that they were going to help me. And we just released and published that app. You can go to your Apple store mm -hmm. and download Speak, S-P-E-A-K, with an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. Music as language, or you can just put speak exclamation point. And it is an app that will help you if you have someone in your family or your friends that are having difficulty uh, expressing themselves, communicating. It's some powerful teaching. If you, if you want to be a singer, it's powerful teaching. It's all one reflex. It's about Utilizing the mouth, the mm -hmm. face, and those lips. The lips have to be a part of the process. The jaw has to open. It's, it's quite amazing. Excellent. And so, you know, you've just given us, um, you know, a brief sample, example of what you mean. But when you say this about the lips, now we, we speak, and I put that in inverted brackets, daily yeah we're, we're constantly communicating with each other in different ways but you said there's a certain way to get the best out of your communication so can you just give us a couple yes. of can, can you go through a couple of those techniques with yes. me yes okay. well first would you do this with me put your finger here mm -hmm. and your thumb here uh-huh just talk to me for a second just talk to me tell me something Okay, Bernadette, I like your glasses. I can see the reflection of, of them there. Um, they're nice and big and round. I can also see the color of your lipstick. That's sort of a contrast to the black frames that you are wearing. Did you notice how much your jaw moves? Did you know your jaw moved that much? Not really. I don't think I've ever taken the time to. Um, Nobody has. Mm -hmm. And that's the point. These children have their job. Well, most of us, we have become a world of mumblers, literally. Oh, oh. You say things to, to uh, people like go to bed. What does that mean? You mean go to bed? Ah, oh, okay. Go to bed. The words change shape. So your mouth has to change shape with the words. Hello. How Hello. are you? How are you? You see what I'm saying? And it um, feels freer though. It, it feels freer, not as restrictive or con it's constrict restrict restrictive. Restricted. Restricted. 
Oh, it's connected to everything. Your tongue uh -huh. is connected to the back of your teeth, your jaw. And if the tongue is not moving, la, 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 la. So what I've created is a language all for them. Uh -huh. Words are pow, which opens the jaw to its maximum ability. Pow. Pow. So, which shoots the voice up into the head where it can resound like the bell that it is. Uh-huh. And la, it gets the tongue out of the back of the throat because our tongues just rest in the well of our throat if we don't know about it. And so we have made the mistake of teaching our children to do everything but talk. We came here from God going, dad, dad. Yes. That jaw was wide open, mama. But we don't do that anymore. We just kind of have crunched it all into this little area of tightness. Mm -hmm. hey, what's your name? Where do you live? Uh, how long have you been teaching at that school? Well, a child, you need to put that baby on your lap as soon as you can and let him see or her see how the mouth works inside. Mm. What's going on in there? All they see is your mouth. They don't understand how you're pulling it off. So uh, that's, it, go ahead. Sorry, apologies. And even now that you've brought that to my attention, I've noticed in terms of how you're speaking, you know, there's lots of almost, it's quite theatrical now, you know, yeah. very enunciated. Um, and so well, I, that's I, what a singer does. Singers do that. Hello. You used to see Whitney's uh, mouth go like this. How many singers have you seen do that? That's because their jaw is open all the way. People are so used to growling the voice, almost ventriloquist. Mm. But, we hear. but the voice goes throughout your body like a saxophone. Mm. It doesn't just come from here. That's why so many people are hoarse. Why so many people have problems with their throats. It's a, without the air, there's nothing for the words to float out on. So you have to breathe and you have to use your instrument, which is your body. Hey. Wow, that is a really powerful process, but also a powerful tool and a powerful product that you've created and, and developed. And also you said that at the moment it's free for- It's gonna stay to free. It's gonna stay free. It's gonna stay free because I want little kids sitting in the dirt in India to have it. I want little kids in the in the woods in, in Africa or the people that can't afford it. I didn't do this for money because God has blessed me. I'm not rich, but I'm rich in life and love and health. Mm. And I figured, what more do I really need? Really? I've had everything anybody's ever had everything i got an emmy sitting on my desk what is it i need mm. i need to give what i've been given and that's something that stevie also taught me is that he reached back and got me he had no idea i could sing i met him i was doing voiceovers for radio stations I was 16, 15 years old when I met Stevie Wonder. I didn't see him for 10 years. And I saw him in Vancouver at uh, a concert with Shaka Khan. And I saw his, his brother, John Harris, who I spoke of earlier. And I said, do you think I could see Stevie? And he said, why couldn't you see him? And when I went back into the dressing room, he said, what are you doing now, Granddad? I said, I'm a singer. He says, you what? You never told me you could sing. And I said, well, who would tell Stevie Wonder they could sing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, send me something. And I sent him, I need you. You can find it. It's on YouTube. It's on a compilation album by Patrick Biggerstaff, um, who is a promoter in there in yes. London. Yes. And, uh, yes. You can go to YouTube, put Bernadette Bascom and Stevie Wonder, and you'll not only get, Stevie came up here and performed with me one night. I was a clear, just shocked me. 
and play drums on the song I wrote, I Need You. So go, Bernadette Bascom, I Need You. Or I Don't Want to Lose Your Love. Or mm -hmm. The Night Stevie Wonder Came. I mean, it's been an incredible career. So why would I charge somebody after all these blessings have poured on my head? Fantastic. It's almost like this is a nice finale to the this conversation um because what you're doing it, it speaks on so many levels not just into people's lives but from the place it's coming from within you and as you've just said that it's almost like it's come to it the, the interview sort of come to its conclusion and you're just like i'm in a good place now yeah just, just run with it just run with it. And one thing before winding down, Bernadette, I know a couple of years ago you celebrated, um, you celebrated something else as well. Just share, share with us what you celebrated. Um, was it your an album that you bought out, if I remember correctly? Well, I came to England, which is where I met you. Did indeed. Is it yes. two years now? Three years, isn't it? Well, it was 2019. It was right before the pandemic. It was the year before the pandemic began mm -hmm. in earnest. And uh, Patrick Biggerstaff, he owns, uh, well, he is a promoter for um, Zippo Soul, Zippo Soul, I Zippo Soul, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And he put together a compilation of all my music that I've done over the years. And he also put The Night Stevie Wonder came Excellent. on the album. Um, you guys, I think it's sold out, but you can find it on YouTube. And people, please listen to my music. I think you'll love it. Stevie, oh, Wonder, yes. Stevie Wonder did. <laughs> That's always just makes me so proud and happy. Fantastic. Well, Bernadette, you know, you've shared so wonderfully. And, and also, you know, this is the season to be jolly, as they say. You know, this is a season of giving. I mean, yeah. the season of giving should be any time, but this is specifically around this time that people do look to give more or they become more aware of what they want to give to. And thank you for gifting the world um, with this. Well, let's not leave Microsoft out. For a and, corporation and, to give me a platform like this and to give the best of their software engineers, their, their scientists, their, come on now. You're not doing this. <laughs> Thank you, Microsoft. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, ladies and gents, this is Bernadette Bastum. Um, there's going to be you're going to get from her over the next year in 2023 because this is just the start and we're wishing you a fantastic festive season wishing you a fantastic christmas and all the best for the new year yay love across the pond <laughs> receiving it well so thank you so much bernadette and thank you for your time like i said wishing you all the best and also the children the, the children's lives that you're touching the families that you're touching you know that's the biggest gift for the best gift that you ever give so fantastic. i'm so honored to do it Excellent. bye bye baby He was in Vancouver performing at uh, the Queen Victoria Theatre with Shaka Khan. And I told the band, I said, you guys, I'm friends with Stevie Wonder, come go with me. And they were like, yeah, right. I had a, a mother basically grab my wrist when I was walking through a nightclub trying not to be seen till time to go on stage. And she grabbed my wrist and she said, had you ever thought about teaching young people with disabilities? And I said, no, I hadn't. I said, but I'd be honored to try. 
And the next Saturday, we were at a place called the North Shore Senior Center, where they hosted a group of uh, young people with disabilities called the Wranglers. And at first, I thought it was just going to be a fun thing, just something to be able to do with them on Saturdays. But then I started noticing them not only coming out of their shell as personalities, but of them trying to talk to me, trying to say the words in the song. So that's how this began. And as the kids started learning how to say other people's words, they started learning how to say their own words. And I'm not saying they're orators, but they can say, I love you. They can say the things that, that families need to be able to say to each other and parents need to hear. I had one father just cry because his daughter came in the kitchen while he was working on his computer and said, so dad, how's your day? And if you do and you're satisfied, it can be pretty, it can be well done, but if it doesn't teach, I don't want to do it. And so I think as we've gone along, we've been able to partner so beautifully. And the fact that they would create a moment where people like me that have good hearts, that they create a time that we can come and they help us refine and polish a good deed. That's incredible.